Welcome again to ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we will learn how can we use the named options in our ASP.NET Core application while working with option pattern. And this option pattern is used to read the configurations from our app settings.json file. We need to learn how to work with named options. Before working with named options, let's understand what is the need of using these named options. Let's open the Visual Studio. In this book store web application, here you can notice that we have created one object and we are using this object to display an alert message onto our application UI. Now suppose along with this alert box, I want to add one more alert box. So suppose, let's copy this code, paste it again and let's update the name. Suppose this is third party book. The key name is third party book and the properties inside this new object are similar to the previous one. And I want to use the same model that we have already used in the previous videos because that model already has these two properties. Let's open the startup class. Here you can notice that we are already using this model class over here. Now I need to use the same settings for the second object. Here we need to write our second key. Now if you are doing your configuration in this way, then the second one will override all the settings that we have defined in the previous one. So to resolve this problem, we need to use the named configurations. And how to do that? In the first parameter, we need to pass the name of this particular configuration. What is the name? You can give it any meaningful name. Suppose here I'm writing internal book and then here I'm writing third party book. All the settings that are available in this new book alert key will be treated as internal book and all the settings that we have defined in this third party book those will be treated as third party book let's go to our home controller and over here we need to update this code we have already injected this i option snapshot service over here we are using this new book alert configuration field to assign the values from this i options snapshot service let's add one more field and suppose this time i'm writing third party book configuration just like this now here we need to bind the values let's copy this field name now here we need to make some changes instead of using this value property now we need to use this get method and in this get method we need to pass the same name that we have defined into our startup class so we will use this name and for the first one we are using internal book let's copy and paste the same name and in the second one for the third party we have used this third party book name let's use the get method okay let's save all the changes here we do not need this name let's comment this code and again let's add one more line and let's give it any name so basically we need to check the values that are available in both the fields again let's go back to our app settings file and here let's update some values save all the changes go back to the controller here we already have an breakpoint and now let's run this application in debug mode let's see what we got in this first one so here we have all the settings this is the name of our book and this is the boolean flag now let's focus on the third party book configuration here we have the updated name and this is coming from the second object and here we have the boolean value let's click on the continue button this is how we can use the named options in asp.net core application while working on c sharp file now let's understand how can we use the same approach in view file let's open this header and suppose here I want to apply same logic let's copy and paste this code now here we need to use the named options let's add one more line and this time here we can write third party book alert just like this and here we need to use the get method let's copy the key and let's use the get method again let's copy the key for the second one this is the third party let's use the get method we can use this variable to display the value for the first one and we can use this variable to read the value from the second object save the changes and run this application by pressing ctrl f5 this time here you can notice that we have 
two alert this one is coming for the first object and this one is coming from the second object and remember to map the configurations into our code we are using the same model in both the object let's click on the about and here you can notice that everything is working fine on all the pages let's update some values so suppose here i'm writing one one just to update the values and here also i want to update the values save the changes go back to the browser refresh this page and the updated value is available in both the alert box while working with named options there are a couple of things that you need to take care of the first is that you cannot use i options for the named options either you can use i option snapshot or you can use i options monitor but remember if you are using any scoped service inside the singleton service then you can only use the monitor i options monitor in that scenario you cannot use i options snapshot only the i options monitor is applicable that is all in this video thank you for watching have a great day